Number one, it reminded them that they were sinners, and that's why they were suffering. And it was, they were exercising faith that if I look at that pole, if I look at that object, God says I'll be healed. Christ was also hung on a pole. In the book of Corinthians, it says he became sin who was sinless. We know that Christ had no sin, but he became sin. And they nailed him to the cross and hung him up. In John twelve thirty two, the word of God, Jesus says, and, if, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. It says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Christ tells us in his word in many different places throughout the Bible. Uh, and the scripture that I gave you a while ago, chapter 5, uh, for 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made righteousness or we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, and I know that my time is limited here, but church, the key thing is Christ is not being exalted any longer. People aren't going to church to exalt Christ. They're not going to learn about the word of God. They're going to be seen and they're going to have uh, just a fellowship time and party time with their friends and relatives. But God has told me, he spoke to me this morning, he said, son, he said, you don't need coffee shops in the lobby. You don't need rock bands in the congregation. He said, you don't need all of this stuff to lift up the name of Jesus. He said, tell my people to get back to the early church, to get back to the basics and come into God's house lifting up holy hands and living a holy life and praising a holy God. God's looking for someone today. He said, if two or three of you will come into my midst, come in together and come into my name. He said, I'll come and be have church with you. You see, you don't need large crowds. And for those of you joining by television, Television. This is a very small country church compared to the mega churches. Uh, we're a small congregation. You can look around uh, and you can count the number of people in here in just a few minutes. Why? Because I had rather have five people uh, in the house of God that come to worship the Lord uh, than to have 5,000 that are coming in to have a party or a rock concert. Uh, I'd rather have somebody that'll stand and agree with me. You see, if me and somebody else, uh, if me and one or two of you uh, can come into agreement, God will take care of the rest. God will tell if he's exalted. He said, son, if you'll just start preaching Jesus. And 20 some years ago, some of you were probably with me when we went out to knock on doors and invite people to church. It's been about 23, 24 years ago. We got together on a Saturday morning and we went out and we knocked on doors and we knocked on doors. And we invited hundreds and hundreds of people to come to church. Got back. It was a Saturday, Sunday I was expecting the whole church to be full. Nobody showed up. Not any of the people that we had invited. Just the regular people had come. God spoke to me and he said, Son, you take care of the pulpit. I'll take care of the congregation. It's not about numbers. He said, You take care of the pulpit. You preach what I tell you to preach. And I'll take care of the congregation. Church, for 23 years... I've been standing here doing the very best I can to take care of the pulpit, to listen to what God tells me to preach. And I try to preach what he tells me, not what man's taught me, not what man says is tradition. But you listen to me, congregation. There's coming a time that you're going to stand before God and I'm going to stand before God. The, tra the traditional ways of the world are, do not belong in God's house. And pastors, let me tell you, and I'll tell all the Christians watching television, all the heathens and everybody else, it's time to get back to the basics of the early church, where when you come into God's sanctuary, you come into the house of God. You don't need the world in the house of God. All you need in the house of God is the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And if we'd get the Spirit of the Holy Ghost back in charge and let God run the church instead of the deacon boards, instead of the elders, instead of the pastors, uh, instead of the congregation, the women of the church, the men of the church, if we'll get everybody out of the way and let God have His way again, 
let God take over the congregation again and let men get out of the way, then it'll be done right because God has never made a mistake. He's not made a mistake in the past. He's not made a mistake in the present. And He will not make a mistake in the future. God is very capable of running a church. He's very capable of taking care of His house. He's very capable of taking care of His children. And He's very capable of taking care of me and you. He can take care of us if we'll just get out of His way. And he said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, you see, the people of Israel had to look up to the pole. They had to look on the pole. He said, if you'll look at that serpent when you've been bitten by sin, when you've been bitten by evil, if you'll look to that serpent, you'll be healed. They were operating by faith. They believed a, a viper would bite them. They didn't go look at the rock laying on the ground. They didn't go look at the bow and arrow or anything. They looked to the serpent. Why? Because they had believed what God said. If you will keep your eyes on the cross, I'll heal you. Jesus bore the stripes for your healing. He, you're, we, when we look to the cross today, when we get our eyes off the cross, that's when we bring problems into our lives. But as long as we're looking at the cross, as long as we're looking toward Christ, Praise God, He's our answer. He will heal us, set us free, deliver us, and He will take care of His own. But church, we've got to operate by faith. We've got to get focused back on the cross and get our eyes off the restaurants and the, the coffee shops and everything that the world is trying to bring into the churches because it's not only right here in Moore County. It's in other places all over the world. They're trying to make it a circus fiasco, a circus show in the church. But church, it's time for us to get back to Calvary, looking to Jesus and those joining by television. God knows you. He sees your every tear. He knows every sin you've ever committed. He wants to deliver you from the bondage of sin. If you have sin in your life and the Lord's dealing with your heart, I want you to say this prayer with me. Father God, I come before you today. I am a sinner. I ask you, Father, to place my sins under the blood of Jesus. For I believe in my heart, and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, and that you raised him from the dead. This moment, I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to be my Savior, to be Lord of my life. I ask you, Father, to write my name in the Lamb's book of life, and seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart and you were drawn by the Spirit, dial the number on the screen. Let us know. We'd love to pray with you. Pray for us always. Support us when you can. And remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you. He is the answer, the answer around the world. He is the answer.